boy. Strange. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great thirsty Thursday. The week is gone. And I'm looking back here, how many days? I think we're down to 126 here on the clock. I could be wrong. Let me see. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. And wait, wait, where is it? Ring the bell. The bell. To Joe Boo. Okay, it, it, it's playing with me. To Joe Boo Sports. All right, it is 115. Boy, there's a lot of information on here. Shout out to Michael Anthony Fitness for setting this thing up. Come on. Come on. We can do it. Okay, it's effing with me. But I think it's 126 or 125 days until the start of the NFL season. And I don't know about you, but 126 days. There it is. It's finally at the end. I don't know about you, but I literally cannot wait for the season to get here. It is going to be interesting to say the least because of course all the talking heads and everybody out there all the trolls all the haters are saying that the Dallas Cowboys are going to suck ass they are going to be like the third as Philly 500 said third place in the division that the Eagles are going to win the division and so on yeah well we'll have to let it all play out because I've heard that song and dance every single year what I can say is Right now, that the Cowboys seem to have kicked things into high gear and that they're actually doing some work on the team to try and bring in some more players. I know it's not the splashy moves, the Odell Beckhams and things like that. But I have to say that looking where the second year may be a much bigger year is I look at how Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks are actually beginning to get on the same page here. And I have hoped that Jalen Tolbert, now getting out of the shadows of Michael Gallup, where the Cowboys felt because they gave him the contract, they needed to keep him on the field when clearly Jalen Tolbert was playing better. And I dare say, I don't know that the Dallas Cowboys are done. I don't think they're done. They made some minor moves last year that paid dividends with Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. And now most teams have kind of filled in their roster. They've gotten all the players that they think that they need. They spent a lot of their money. And now it's where the Cowboys will go value shopping. And there are some players out there that could help us with our draft picks. But before we do all that, we got to work with the people that are here. And I want to talk about Dak Prescott seems to be happy about Zeke Elliott returning. And we're going to take a peek and listen to what he had to say. You and Zeke have had a great relationship all the way, you know, up to you guys to this point. What was the conversation like, the first conversation like, when everything came together in his reunion with Dallas? Uh, I mean, me and Zeke always talk. Uh, I think there was there was talks before with me and him, before it happening, obviously. Understanding he, he knew the ends of the deals. Um, I was asked about him. Uh, so it was, it was all excitement as soon as it was, it was mentioned. And, I've seen where he said, right, when, when he left, he was doing everything right, right to show that, that he, to get back here in that sense. And um, when he left in the first place, that, that, I knew that. I knew that that was the method. I knew that was the point in it. Uh, nobody supported him more when he was with the, uh, when he was up north. So just to have him back, I'm excited. Can you elaborate on what about who he is and what about what he does that makes him so meaningful in the locker room? Yeah, he's, just, he, he's a real guy. Um, he's honest. What you see is what you get. Um, as I said, he can have fun when it's time, but when it's time to be serious and lock in, there's nobody better uh, than him. So, I mean, just to be able to, to bring the fun to the locker room, um, but in the same sense, you see that and be able to separate that the moment he walks on the field, to see his focus, to see his intensity, to see the way that he practices. Um, as I said, some uh, young, every young guy should follow uh, the way that he goes about his business on the field, and uh, it's going to be huge for the team. There you go. So, I love that. Okay, now let's take another peek here. This is actually uh, a uh, community softball event um, for charity. And this was the team out there. Let's take a look. Dallas Cowboys, you know, you know, it's the Zeke oh yeah. Zeke oh yeah. Zeke coming out. 
Now, is it me? Or does he look like he got a little bit of a belly? Do, do, does it look? Is it the shirt? Is it the shirt? Because I haven't seen the workout videos, so I guess the workout videos will be back. There's my quarterback. This is great team building events. It's always fun when the Cowboys get together. That was great. Um, <laughs> that was great, and um, yes, let's get on to the next clip here. Um, it's great to see the team together, giving back to the community and things. Um, I think it's great having Zeke back, and here's where it gets to be funny for me is so many of the trolls, the haters, and everything else will go through and they'll tell you, you know, you just got Zeke back, man. Yeah, you're, you're, that's it. That's your plan at running back. Well, I hope that that's not the full plan. I hope that that's not the full plan. But here's what, um, I had a conversation yesterday with Dan Salia when he was basically laughing about that. Um, Zeke Elliott does not have the burst where he's going to be breaking away from people. I can give you that. But when you're talking about short yardage situation, we didn't have that guy last year. We did not. Remember Tony Pollard, who was literally trying to get in and could not get in? Zeke Elliott makes that touchdown. Zeke Elliott will make those short yardage plays. And the other thing, and this may be even more important, um, one, the price tag, it's $2 million up to three with incentives. The other part is if... Tyler Guyton is your starting left tackle. Zeke Elliott is one of the best blocking running backs that are out there. Zeke Elliott can put, will put his nose in there to protect his quarterback. And if we're talking about needing some help on the edge because we have a rookie that may be starting out there, having Zeke go through and chip, go out in the flat, catch a screen pass is not a bad thing. I hope that this isn't the be-all, end-all. They were talking to Dalvin Cook, although Dalvin Cook last year didn't have anything, although he was on a bad team. It seemed to have just literally fallen off a cliff. Now, there are other players out there at this point where if the Cowboys are shrewd and really do want to try and get over the hump, they can. You know, we go through, and by the playoffs, they say that we're just chokers. See, here's the difference for the Cowboys versus, say, the Eagles, the problem that they have. The Cowboys have great starters in a lot of positions. Not every position, but they have great ones, you know, from the Micah Parsons, the C.D. Lambs, Dak Prescott, and things. The problem is they don't have that second level, that little extra oomph. They don't have the redundancy so to speak. You know, like when you have an airplane, an airplane has, you know, backups on everything. It's not just one control that controls the rudder. You got multiple ones. So if one connection goes down, you got another one to take over. And herein lies where the problem comes with the Cowboys, be it that Zeke Elliott hyperextends his knee or gets a PCL injury, that by the time you get to the playoffs, and I, I know we got my, my buddy Walker Wade will say, we had good teams then. Yes, we did. But by the time we get to the playoffs and you have a Tyron Smith who's been in and out of the lineup, that you are not clicking on all cylinders. And sometimes you need those guys to be able to be part of the rotation to keep you from getting all of the wear and tear. 
if you've got Zeke Elliott and he's 150 carries, by the time the playoffs get here, he'll have some juice. If you're talking about 250, 300 carries, by the time the playoffs get here, he's going to be spent. And see, that's the problem here is we need more depth and weapons to go around. San Francisco had more depth and weapons than you could shake a stick at, far more than what we had anywhere close to it. We had a great receiver at C.D. Lamb. But then when you dropped off to the numbers for Brandon Cooks or for Michael Gallup, you're down in no man's land. And this is where the Cowboys need to be better. So we're going to close this off since this has been about um, Zeke Elliott returning and the Dallas Cowboys getting to work on OTAs. Let's go to what they say about Zeke Elliott. Joining the team after really a lot of overtures between the two sides, Zeke for quite a while now wanting to find his way back to Dallas. He has not been shy about that at all. Adam Schefter originally reporting the one-year deal worth up to $3 million to return to the Cowboys. Again, not top-tier money, really not even backup money when you consider Ezekiel Elliott's resume, but it was very clear to him and to the team that he wanted back in Dallas. Perhaps maybe he can finish his career where he started it. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, it feels like a nice reunion for a variety of reasons. Swaggo, you think Zeke in that reunion is enough for this Dallas run game to improve after last season? Um, I see him improving in the area of the red zone, uh, red area, and that's where we talked about last year, a number of weeks with them not having that bell cow like Zeke has been that physical, powerful runner that can consistently get you in the end zone when you get close to goal line or in the red area. And that's really been his calling card. Listen, he's not the same back, and we all obviously know that. But the, the beauty of this position and the reason why sometimes it's so hard for the really good guys to get paid is because you do it by committee. You have specialists and those type of backs that complement each other. When him and Tony Pollard were playing well together, it was a great compliment, taking pressure off of each other. So a, a physical, powerful back, which we know Zeke to be, they had a problem in that area last year from an offensive standpoint, and bringing some of that physicality back when you get close to the goal line is very important if this team is going to have any success uh, offensively moving forward. I'm with you, Swagoo. I think it's a by-committee thing. No, Zeke Elliott is not in and of himself going to make the yes. run game an improvement. But when you take that with Rico, who they signed back, and he had his flashes even when Tony Pollard was there, and what they did in the draft. I like the fact that they didn't reach for a running back in the draft. They sat at their position and they beefed up their offensive line because I don't care who you bring in to run the football. If your offensive line isn't solidified, there's no way you could be successful. They went and got a tackle and got in. They 100%. went and got BB that could play guard, likely mm -hmm. play center, and that is what's going to improve their line. And then with whatever you get out of Ezekiel Elliott is icing on the cake. Don't care. When does CeeDee Lamb come back? <laughs> uh, I can make the case there is not a receiver in the NFL who has more leverage than CeeDee Lamb right now. And that's Ooh. out of respect to Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Without CeeDee Lamb, all they have left is Brandon Cooks. Yep. That's it. So we're talking about an offense that, in a situation where everything is on the line for head coach, quarterback, the future, there is not a wide receiver in this league that has more leverage right now than CeeDee Lamb. They have to get a deal done with him or they could be looking at a significant holdout, and then this offense goes absolutely yep. nowhere. Yeah, a reminder, he didn't attend yep. the start of voluntary offseason workouts earlier this month. That's why Dan is saying when he comes back. And another thing to add to his leverage, CeeDee Lamb set the Cowboys' single-season record for yeah. catches and receiving yards in 2023. He said, I want a new deal, and I'm going to show you why I deserve it. Let's stay in the NFC East, where the commander's offense had a major... There you go. I want a new contract, and I deserve it. So, there we are. We got work to do, and um, I hope we get this shit done, because I really and truly want Dan and Philly 500 to eat some crow. As always, I appreciate you guys. Peace.